Welcome to the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast, where it's all about using the power of your mind to create hope, health, and miracles on your fertility journey. And now your host, a dash of science and a heap of spirit, Dr. Maria Rothenberger. Hello again, and welcome to the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast. This is Dr. Maria Rothenberger, your host for the podcast. And as you can probably tell from my voice, I am dealing with a cold. This is, first of all, I haven't had a cold in more than a year because COVID. So I don't know, like, thank you, COVID. (laughs) But also, um, I think I probably mentioned this on my last podcast or a couple of podcasts ago that I'm having to, uh, I'm doing too much. And so this is my body's way of um, expressing that. So this podcast will probably be a little bit shorter than normal because I need to self-care. Yay, self-care, because I need to model it for you. So, but I could not pass on today's podcast episode um, because it is probably one of the more profound topics that I found, especially in the fertility world. We are talking, well, right now we're, we're doing a, a chakra series and today's chakra is the sixth chakra, which is the third eye. And it is all about intuition. And I, I have talked about this topic pretty extensively on this podcast. You can find other episodes all about intuition. I did a really fun one with um, Andrea Ryder about how your intuition always knows what's next. And I think that it's really important to dive even deeper into this topic. There are so many more pieces to it. Uh, Today, I'm going to be talking about um, how to tell when you're Um, sixth chakra is out of balance, what parts of the physical body are affected, what parts of the mental, emotional body and the spiritual body are affected, and then how to balance it. So uh, this is really important, especially in the fertility world. And pardon me, I'm going to be um, taking care of my nose (laughs) during this recording. So, okay. For, before we uh, get into the topic, of course, I always like to check in with you to let you know what's happening at the Miracles Happen Fertility Center. First, an update on the Spirit Baby training that is going to be starting in September. Um, that's when I, I made the announcement a couple of episodes ago. I think that I needed to postpone it for a month because I'm doing too much, as evidenced by now a cold. My body's saying uh, hello. I felt it in my spirit a while ago, like a month ago. And uh, now my body's manifesting it. So there you go. (laughs) Okay. And my intuition knew. I knew I had an intuition, an intuitive hit that I was doing too much. And so I announced a while ago that Spirit Baby Training is starting in uh, September 2021 now. Uh, If you want more information on that, head on over to drmariarothenberger.com slash spiritbabytraining and um, just enter your email address and everything. I'm uh, drafting emails to be sent out uh, to you that are all about the details of the training. For now, know that it is an eight-week basic foundations training for intuition, really intuitive work, um, mediumship, connecting with spirit baby realms specifically. And this is for folks who are interested in connecting deeply with your own spirit baby, but also potentially helping other people too you know, um, say that you want to do intuitive work or you want to do mediumship work. This is a great foundations training for that. Okay. Oh, and it's going to be uh, one-on-one with me and also in a group setting. We will be practicing these skills. So you're going to learn what the skills are and then you're going to be practicing them live in a very safe, loving um, environment with just a small group of people. It's not going to be very big which is the way I want it. So you'll have a lot more time with me and others. Okay. So that's probably the biggest announcement. Again, head on over to drmariarothenberger.com slash spirit baby training for that information. And um, if you want, you can get on my newsletter too in general. That just goes out once a month with all of these podcast updates and other things that are going on in my personal life and other things for you, free gifts. Up, You get 
a heads up on like sales and coupons and shit like that, um, way more than the public. And uh, you can unsubscribe at any time. You just go to drmariarothenberger.com and sign up there on the front page. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see there are free gifts too. If you get any of those gifts, you'll also be automatically put on my um, newsletter, which comes out the first Monday of every month. Okay, so let's get into the third eye. Now, this, this topic is really important. Um, actually I wrote a chapter about it in transcending infertility, which is my book that came out last November, uh, November, 2020. Uh, you can head on over to transcending infertility book.com for information on that, or it's on Amazon. Number one bestseller. Yay. That was such a fun time. All right. So there's a chapter in transcending infertility about, I call it trust yourself. And that's what this sixth chakra is about. It's about intuition, right? So, and in, in what is intuition? Intuition is a knowing. Intuition is, um, this is really important. It is not emotional. It is not emotional. Somebody, I just received an email. Oh, I think it was like a week ago from somebody who asked a question. It was, um, I'm having trouble. How did she word it? I'm having trouble deciphering the difference between my intuition and my fear. And that is really common. And uh, sometimes our fear, well, most of the time, frankly, our fear guides us a lot. You know, we're trying to avoid pain. And so we make decisions based on that. Intuition has, intuition is not emotional at all. It's just factual. It's just here are the facts. And as you might have remembered from these, from this whole series, I'm pulling information from two sources specifically for the chakra series, a one really profound book called anatomy of the spirit by Dr. Caroline Mace, um, M Y S S. She talks a lot about this. And so I think that's really important to address and because she talks about doing these, um, workshops and things where people mention, geez, it seems like intuitive work is cold and like, you know, it's just not warm at all. It's just fact, you know? Uh, and so I think it's important to know what, why that, why that's important, you know, why the, uh, lack of emotion and with intuitive work is important. Okay. So first let's talk about the basics of the sixth chakra. So the sixth chakra is called the third eye chakra. And, um, in Sanskrit, I believe it's Ajna. Let's see. Yes. Yes. Ajna. It's pronounced Ajna, A-J-N-A. And it is located uh, right between and slightly above the eyebrows and what it governs the organs are the physical parts of the body that it governs are the brain, the nervous system, eyes and ears, the nose, the pineal gland, and the pituitary gland. The pineal gland is going to be very important here. Uh, the mental and emotional things that the, that the sixth chakra governs, self-evaluation. That's a pretty big one. This is where trusting yourself comes. Truth, and that's where, that's where non-emotion comes from intellectual abilities, feelings of inadequacy, excuse me, feelings of adequacy, openness to the ideas of others. So cool. Ability to learn from experience and emotional intelligence. Now, why does it govern emotional intelligence when it's not emotional? It's just about facts. We're going to be talking about that too. Okay. Things that might happen physically if the sixth chakra is out of balance, brain tumors, strokes, hemorrhages, neurological disturbances, blindness, deafness, full spinal difficulties, learning disabilities, seizures. So let's talk about this emotional piece. What is it about the sixth chakra that helps create emotional intelligence. 
There's a concept in the therapy world called wise mind. I know I've mentioned this like a hundred billion thousand times. <laughs> That's not even a number, but a lot on this podcast. Emotional, or excuse me, wise mind is the marrying of your emotions, which are we use to guide us for sure, and your um, uh, observance or your factual self. You know, the one that looks at the numbers and the graphs and the statistics and then the emotion piece. Taking both of these together is wise mind and making decisions from there is wise mind. That is absolute emotional intelligence. You do not let your emotions completely run your life, but you let them inform your life. And then you pull in your intellect, which is also uh, something that the sixth chakra governs and you make wise decisions from there. The sixth chakra is all about wisdom, wisdom from a very intuitive place. And in the book, Transcending Infertility, I talk about specifically the pineal gland. It's so interesting because the sixth chakra is called the third eye and the pineal gland is this little acorn shaped gland in the, in the, depths of the brain here, the center of the brain. And the area that surrounds the pineal gland, the inside of it is actually lined with the same cells that are or, or similar cells that line the inside of the eye, like the rods and cones. And so it's quite literally the third eye <laughs> it goes directly to the visual cortex. So I have a feeling this is why I, my personal Claire my strongest Claire is clairvoyance. That's clear sight because I've worked actively to strengthen my pineal gland. There is some conspiracy out there. This is interesting, just fun little tidbits that may or may not be true, but interesting um, that uh, the pineal gland gets calcified with the use of fluoride and there's fluoride in our water, fluoride in our toothpaste, things like that. And so the use of the pineal gland gets stymied a little bit because of that fluoride and who governs the, the use of fluoride in our system. You know, I don't know, just fun little like conspiracy stuff. I don't know whether or not I believe that, but it's interesting. It's interesting. And you can strengthen your pineal gland. There is a meditation specifically in transcending infertility that can help you activate your pineal gland. Okay. Pardon me. <laughs> All right. How do you know that? Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I want to talk about, I was going to talk about how, how you know that you're out of whack with your, um, six chakra, but I want to talk about something else first. I want to go deeper a little bit into this, um, sort of what Carolyn Mace's workshop folks have called coldness. I just want to read what she says because she's talking about detachment here. She says, often after I have lectured on detachment, my groups respond that detachment feels too cold and impersonal, but that is not an accurate perception of detachment. In one workshop, I ask each participant to name a situation that they would find extremely threatening. One man said he would find it very difficult to return to his office and learn that the management had taken his responsibilities away from him. I told him to imagine that he was liberated from his attachments to his business and that he could create any options for himself that he wanted. I told him to visualize his business as no more than a drop of energy in his life rather than an ocean of energy and that an abundance of creative power was rushing through him. And then I told him to imagine that he walked into his office and learned that they had fired him. Now, I said, how would you respond? He laughed and said, given the image of himself that he was holding in his mind at the moment, being fired wouldn't matter to him at all. He would be just fine, he said, because he would be able to attract to himself his next place of employment. Okay, I want you to take this scenario and imagine your fertility journey. We have an image in our minds of our ultimate goals, right? And we feel stymied and stuck and it's difficult to move forward through it. There was a time that is all written in Transcending Infertility where I really activated 
my sixth chakra. And I really lived presently. And I really imagined and felt my life being absolutely magical, no matter what, from the smallest little insect to big things that happen like promotions and things like that. Now, when you're living from that place, there is a sense of detachment in a way, because no matter what happens, you're good. You're good. If you get fired, if you you know, somebody gets angry with you. If you have a failed cycle, no matter what happens, you, it's like you're protected. That's what this detachment means. It means that you are embracing being okay, no matter what. And I'm telling you, it is such a free place. And there's so much warmth and tenderness and love in that way of being it's, it's amazing. And in fact, I even need to hear this today because we have, um, I need to remind myself of this today. Specifically, we have guests coming this weekend. I've got a cold. I'm moving out of my office, moving into my home office. And so I have a lot of shit going on. Right. But no matter what, if you detach from how you imagine things need to be and you stay in the place of how they are, you become okay. You become okay. My sister even reminded me, she's like, Maria, things are going to be just fine. It's going to be fine. You don't have to have all, you know, the appetizers and wine out when your guests arrive and you don't have to have it all perfect. It's going to be fine. Side note, I am not the best entertainer. I like being entertained. (laughs) I'm not the best entertainer. (laughs) So I could use some tips. Anyway, um, even though I'm not the best entertainer, things are going to be okay, right? That's what this knowingness is. That's what tapping into your sixth chakra is, the being okay no matter what. And there's such lightness and joy there in that space. So I, I, I use the word detachment. There's a great book called The Impersonal Life, by the way, that uh, is on my shelf being, it's ready to be read Um, I flipped through it, sort of Cliff Notes version, and now I want to read the whole thing because that's the embodiment of the sixth chakra, the impersonal life. It's about looking at things from an objective point of view and a wise point of view, that everything is going exactly as it needs to be. (laughs) Excuse me. I am so sorry. All right. Including this cold, this is exactly how it needs to be because I need to slow down. Okay. Okay. How do you know that your sixth chakra is out of balance? You may find that you judge yourself. You may find that you judge others. You may find that you ignore your own internal guidance system, your own intuition. You may move forward with a treatment protocol that just doesn't feel right to you because You know, the professionals told you that's what needed to happen. You are attached to everything. You're attached to everything intensely. So everything has to be right. Everything has to be perfect. That's like when I laid out my own super complicated traditional Chinese medicine protocol phase one of my cycle, phase two of my cycle, phase three of my cycle, I needed to put all of my supplements exactly in order. I marked all the little bottles. I put them all in order on the counter. I was diligent about it. And if I fucked up, everything was fucked up. Everything was ruined. That cycle wasn't going to work. I was extremely attached to things being perfect, going perfectly. And it was all on me. It was all on me. So the ways that, and then you might find physically a lot of headaches, um, dizziness, maybe head colds, brain fog, uh, those kinds of things. It doesn't have to go immediately to what this other list was, you know, like a brain tumor or something. Please don't go down that road. Let's not put that into your awareness, but you might experience frequent headaches, things like that. Migraines. Okay. 
So there are some, there's some food for thought in Carolyn Mays' book here. She gives some specific steps to begin rebalancing the sixth chakra. She says, develop a practice of introspection and work to become conscious of what you believe and why. Keep an open mind and learn to become aware when your mind is shutting down. Recognize defensiveness as an attempt to keep new insights from entering your mental field. Interpret all situations and relationships as having a symbolic importance, even if you cannot com- immediately understand what it is. Become open to receiving guidance and insight through your dreams. Oh, that is such a good one. It's an excellent place to start is with your dreams. Put that intention out there before you go to bed, by the way. Before you go to bed, uh, say to the universe, I welcome any and all insights you want to give me in my dreams tonight. And thank you. Work toward releasing any thoughts that promote self-pity or anger or that blame another person for anything that has happened to you. Really important. Practice detachment. Make decisions based upon the wisest assessment you can in the immediate moment, rather than working to create a specific outcome. Refrain from all judgments. And she goes on about that, but I'm just going to say judgments about yourself and other people. It does start with you though. Start with not judging yourself. Learn to recognize when you are being influenced by a fear pattern. Wow, isn't that huge in the fertility world, right? What we fear governs a lot of our choices. Learn to float above that. Honor the fear as just a piece of you that is attempting to protect you. And then look at the situation for what it actually is. She says, detach from all values that support the belief that success in life means achieving certain goals. Instead, view a successful life as a process of achieving self-control and the capacity to work through the challenges life brings you. Visualize success as an energy force rather than a physical one. I'm going to end there. She's got a couple more, but I'm going to end there because... That is exactly this shift that I experienced, and it is absolutely profound. Nobody could tell the difference, really. They see, they saw that I was brighter, happier, uh, more talkative, more engaged. They didn't know the profound energetic shift within me, but I did. And that is the epitome of success in my eyes. Okay. Now, just going to Chopra.com here to tell you what they say about um, the sixth chakra. So some of those things that we just went through the list on in Carolyn Mace's book, those are all ways to profoundly create a profound shift in the sixth chakra. But say you're just experiencing a headache. Maybe you just have a headache. There is a sixth chakra imbalance there, and there are things that you can do for that. So... This is what um, Deepak Chopra says on his website. So, oh, I love, first of all, what he says about the sixth chakra. Uh, He says, Ajna means beyond wisdom. That's cool. I was thinking, oh, it's wisdom. But he says beyond wisdom, or Ajna means beyond wisdom. That's really cool. An open sixth chakra can enable clairvoyance. That's what my experience was. Telepathy lucid dreaming, expanded imagination, and visualization. Lucid dreaming, by the way. Oh my God, is that... Oh, if you have not experienced a lucid dream, it is absolutely incredible. The last lucid dream that I had, I was standing on a cliff with a bunch of people behind me, and there was water far, 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 far below. And just as in my waking life, I love to teach and learn and guide people to their own skills and their own truth. And I wanted to show people that they could do far more than what they thought they could do in my dream. I'm dreaming this. Now, a lucid dream means that you control, you, you know, you are aware that you're dreaming. And so you do these really cool things. So I was very aware that I was dreaming 
And on the edge of this cliff, I dove, dove, dove straight down toward the water. And just before I hit the water, I flew back up and I landed back on this um, cliffside. And I turned to all of them and I said, you can do all this too. Come with me. Right. So much fun. That's how I like to be in my waking life too, by the way. You can do all of this. Come with me. Come with me and learn. You can do all this. You can have all this. You can be all this. You can be free from the intensity of the fertility world. You can move through it with greater grace and ease. That's what transcending infertility is all about. Okay, so um, I went off on a tangent there. But it's still about <laughs> still about the sixth chakra here. So, okay, he talks a lot about your intuition as part of the... Um, sixth chakra, and it's a sixth sense, right? The sixth sense. So how to balance the ajna, how to balance the sixth chakra. He says, just like any spiritual chakra, the sixth chakra is best balanced through meditation. So especially when you focus on the pineal gland in meditation, You can create real physical change, by the way, in meditation, uh, especially when you get down to that theta brainwave level. Uh, You can create actual physical change in your cells. Your cells are always listening to you. They are alive, receiving information, and then creating output based on that information you give them. So uh, focus on that uh, pineal gland and activating the pineal gland, sending lots of energy to the pineal gland. If you need to know where it is physically, Dr. Google it up but don't go crazy. Uh, You know, I like to say, be frugal with your Google um, and focus on it. And there is a meditation, as I mentioned, in Transcending Infertility that's all about um, the pineal gland. Oh, by the way, when you pick up Transcending Infertility, all the meditations that are in the book, there are nine of them, are yours free, pre-recorded by yours truly. And the website is in the book. You get them free. So they are written down as scripts. You can certainly record them yourself or have somebody else record them for you, but they are already pre-recorded for you. Um, they all come with the book, the websites there inside the book. Okay. So, um, Dr. Chopra also gives a couple of other ideas for balancing the Ajna, the sixth chakra. Um, there is a breathing technique called bee breath. I had not heard of this, but yogis probably know this. So it's, he says, bring both hands to your face, place the two middle fingers over your eyes, allow the index fingers to rest on the eyebrow line and the pinky fingers under the cheekbones. Close your ears with your thumbs, take a deep inhalation and exhale the word om with the emphasis on the M sound while creating a buzzing sound like a bee. Do this for two minutes or more. You can alleviate tension in the head and this healing practice will work to open the sixth chakra. Cool technique. I need to do that now because I have pressure in my head (laughs) for this cold. Okay, the color of the sixth chakra is indigo, probably one of my most favorite colors. And you can uh, use uh, crystals that are indigo color indigo in, or uh, that their color is indigo. And you can place them on the sixth chakra. You can just hold them with you in your pocket all throughout the day. You can meditate with them. Lots of uh, techniques and skills that you can use with your chakra, with your uh, crystals. Uh, Some examples are amethyst, lapis lazuli, azurite, blue sapphire, sodalite, and uh, tanzanite, tanzanite. Uh, all right, so uh, go back to the crystal episode where I talk about, where I interviewed um, someone about crystals, a very, um, Brahma, her name is, a very wise and um, highly educated person on crystals. Um, all right, so you can use these crystals to balance the chakra. Uh, Dr. Chopra also talks about yogi or yoga poses that you can use. Uh, again, I am not a yoga instructor, so consult with a yoga instructor about these, but child's pose where your forehead is pressed to the floor or dolphin pose. Those are both helpful 
uh, as listed on Chopra.com for uh, opening and balancing that sixth chakra. Okay. Well, this episode turned out to be a typical length, (laughs) 30 minutes, because even though I've got a cold, I can freaking talk. All right. So listen, I'm wishing you total depth of intuitive knowledge and wisdom and a detachment from what comes your way, knowing that no matter what, things are working out precisely as they need to be, even when it doesn't feel like it emotionally, when you have an awareness and a wisdom that it is, you become free. Wishing that for you. And until next time, my friend, please be well. 